can I bring up uh, some of those so citations for you? Sure, sure, sure. sure. Cherry, pick cherry away. pick. It's not cherry picking. It's just simply. Oh, you're you're totally gonna cherry pick. I mean, we all know it. We all know you're gonna cherry pick. But go ahead, go ahead. Okay, let me just pick up some of them quickly. Open them for you. There's no cherry picking, but uh, okay. Because you you clearly say there's no trigonomic function for celestial navigation, correct? No, I said there's no triangles. So what, what try is, to, try what to is, keep it correct. What there's is, no triangles in, in so celestial what's navigation. So what's trigonometry? Trigonometry is more than just triangles. What's trigonometry? You don't know that? What's trigonometry? What is trigonometry? Mm. You don't know it? Why are you trying to tell me what trigonometry is if you don't know what it is? You saying it's not triangles? So I want to know what's what's Sakatoa. I said it's not just triangles. Is Sakatoa triangle? Sokotoa is, but that there's more to trigonometry than Sokotoa. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, it's not just solving six. triangles. Are are you? Do you know how a fast Fourier transform works? No, go on. Explain. Okay, sine sine and cosine are used in that. No triangles at all. Do you know how a uh, discrete but cosine talk, transforms? But you, see, but you see, we're talking about uh, celestial navigation, which specifically works with trigonomic function of Sakatoa. Oh, well, it does. Oh, well, just sh show the process. Go ahead. Uh, let me quickly get on screen. Can I share my screen? Okay. Let's just share my screen like that. Share. Okay. You can see what's going on here. Uh, okay, yeah, I don't yeah. need this one yet. This is just the principle of the six. I want to bring that up just now. Okay, navigation of the stars. Okay, this is obviously different techniques. Talking about trim trigonometric was first used in navigation by 14th century. Several navigation techniques can be identified in navigators' personal notebooks, including the table of the application of plane trigonometry. You would agree, plane trigonometry requires it to be a triangle. No. So the application of plane trigonometry. You would agree plane trigonometry requires it to be a triangle. No. What's plane trigonometry? Don't know. That, that it's not it's not lead, uh, specifying it here. It's just giving a little bit of plane a trigonometry overview. requires it to be on the same plane, in other words. So if I'm making an angle measurement over a plane. Okay. We can also use the Pythagorean theorem to find the distance between any two points on a Cartesian coordinate plane. Let's pick two points. The first with coordinates x1, comma, y1, and the second with coordinates x2, comma, y2. But when we draw horizontal and vertical lines through the points, you can probably see where we're going. Since the new lines are perpendicular, the triangle is a right triangle, and we can apply the Pythagorean theorem. Well, well bring up bring up the process. Okay. Let's look at the process. This is one used. navigation with the stars. Bring it up. Trigonometry. Yeah, bring it up. One, bring, up bring, the, next. bring up. No, bring no, up the process we're still that getting they used there. We're still getting Wait, there. You're a little, why are you we're scared still, to bring up the process that they used? We're still used? getting there. Trigonometry so you're processes. Just cherry, you're just cherry picking. You're proving me right by cherry picking. Trigonometry process or solution navigation or astro navigation subject to presentation of mass curriculum, right. well, blah, blah, blah. Bring it up. Let's look at how it's done. I'm just first giving all the citations showing that they do use trigonometry. But, well, just show how it's done there, flat site. Trigonometry. Let's look at how they do it. Trig why don't you want to show how it's done? Sailing with trigonometry. Okay. Let's bring it up. Come on. Oh, I've got it up. Bring it up. Trigonometry is used in navigation. No, bring up the process. Bring up the process. Let's look at the process. And we'll, you we'll, saying we'll we don't use trigonometry. I'm saying we do use trigonometry. That's the argument okay. right now. I'm, I, I'm happy to go through the process in this book where there are no triangles involved. But you're saying there's triangles involved in the process, but you're not showing the process. Go ahead. Show it where it's happening. I'm not showing the process. Go ahead. Show it where it's happening. They sign the Can cosine? you show this? <clears throat> show the step-by-step -step process of celestial navigation using triangles. Go ahead. Let's first start with a little bit of background about lines of position in general and what they mean. When we talk about a line of position, we're just talking about some place on the earth that we know we are, or more specifically, where we were. Imagine a case in which you're floating out there in the ocean and you have a lighthouse on an island, and you want to help uh, figure out where you are using that lighthouse. Uh, celestially, a bearing is known as an azimuth. So we'll come back to that later. But if I use my compass and I take a bearing of that lighthouse, I could then go onto the chart and draw a line kind of backwards from the lighthouse and I know I'm somewhere on that line. And when we do celestial navigation, we're going to do the same thing, but we're going to do it for not the lighthouses on Earth, but the lighthouses in the sky. For terrestrial or land or water, you know, earth-based navigation, 
would be uh, using geometry to help figure something out. Because if you knew the height of this light, and they're always listed on the chart, and you had some tool to help you measure the angle between the bottom and the top of that light, you could create a little triangle here. And it's a right triangle. You could create a little triangle here. And it's a right triangle. It's a right angle, assuming the lighthouse is built straight, of course. So if you could measure this angle right here, call it maybe theta, that's like a mathematical angle, and you knew this angle right here, and that means you can figure out this angle right here, and if you knew the height, and you can figure out your distance using that method. So we don't often do that in navigation because we've got radar and we've got charts and we've got compasses that give us lines of position which are easier. But this is a valid technique. And when you think about celestial navigation, we're not necessarily doing that. But the principle of triangles and angles and right angles and figuring out sides and everything is definitely helpful when it comes to a celestial site reduction process. They sign the Can you show the, show the step-by-step -step process of celestial navigation using triangles? Go ahead. Uh, we could do the same thing. We could set up, you know, an angle between us, the horizon, and the sun, and it's going to turn into a, a big triangle that we could solve geometrically. They sign the Can you show the, <clears throat> show the step-by-step -step process of celestial navigation using triangles. Go ahead. The horizon and the sun, and it's going to turn into a, a big triangle that we could solve geometrically. A big triangle that we could solve geometrically. A big triangle that we could solve geometrically. Okay, you take, you take a uh, measurement to the celestial object, correct? Go ahead. An angular measurement. To, I'm going to think I'm going to try draw. You don't need to keep. I think I'm you don't have to keep asking me. Just just go no, ahead no, and show I'm, the I'm process to, of doing celestial navigation. To, I need you to concede when I do these things. That's why I'm doing it this way. No, no, no. Yes, yes, yeah. Okay. When we take a angular measurement to a star, let's say in the sky here, we are on the ocean floor or, you know, on a ship or whatever. It doesn't matter. We're using a nautical sextant, so obviously on a little boat. Okay, and we're going to take an angular reading to the star, correct? Would you agree about that? Keep going. Okay, now we've got two straight lines going out that way. You would agree that we have a 90 degree. No. We don't that's have That's not 90. That's less, that's less than 90. We don't have a 90. That's not 90 there. No, that's less than 90. That's, that's not maybe. 90. That's not 90. Oh, there it is. Okay, now it's 90. We yeah, have a 90. Between... Okay. Okay, cool. Yeah, at that point, at that point. Yeah. Great. And the star has a 90 as well, correct? That That's it. That's presuming. What you're doing is presuming no, no, that no, the Earth no. is that's, flat. That's how it's You're working. making an assumption. No, you're this making is... an assumption on this. This is how the trigonometry works, mate. Bodies whose geographic positions will be hundreds or even thousands of miles away from your own position. Theoretically, you could use the first method to plot your line of position. Uh, so you say, let's... but but you but you're this is just your let's... claim. You're not actually showing the process let's, of let's, celestial navigation from say... from a citation that you that you brought up. Let, let, you're just say... you're just inventing this process that is not based on the books that you are referencing. I see star A, let's say, at 50 degrees, 50 degrees above the horizon. Now, how would I get that measurement? Okay. So, the way I would get that measurement is using a nautical instrument. You've probably seen it. I'm going to try to sketch it real quick. It's called a sextant. And I go to this book and I'm saying, okay, it's 6 p.m. and I'm looking at star A. And the book will tell me, well, star A should be located at this position okay at 6 p.m. okay at 6 p.m. you should be seeing si uh, star A directly over your head 90 degrees right so if I'm standing out here in the middle of the ocean at this position okay not where I'm at okay at this particular position I would see star A directly above my head at 90 degrees so with those two pieces of information Okay, I can use some trigonometry. Okay, this is going to be a right angle. 
I have a degree here, I have a location here. Well, the only way you can do that is that you have to be a certain distance away from its location at 6 p.m. Okay, and it's basically going to build us a little circle here. So let's use, let's just make a number up. Let's say in order to see star A at 50 degrees, okay, at 6 p.m. at night, you have to be a 900 miles away to be able to see that observation. Let's say I measured an angle to the star at 50 degrees. Okay, you would agree okay. that's 50 degrees. Okay, to the star. Not to scale, that's fine. But yeah. yeah, it's not to scale, obviously. Okay? Yeah. We measured 50. What's the internal sum of a triangle? 180. 180. So that would give yeah. us 40, correct? Yeah. Okay. So if we use uh, the math anyway to just verify this, 90 minus the measured angle gives us the altitude, ang the elevation angle, which is 40 times 60 nautical miles which gives us our distance 